Breakage comes with the territory, the territory of life. We can all think about something in our lives that was broken. The use of pottery in Jeremiah was as helpful for that community in 600 before the Common Era as it is for those of us lucky to be alive today, September 8, 2019. When my last grandparent died, I found myself on the cliffs of limestone looking down over the Mississippi River. The old farmhouse was full of the Cassett treasures as Grammy Ruth was able to live in her home until she was 99 years old. Her extended family was offered anything in that house that each of us wanted. So I decided to take one thing for each of my family. For my husband, I took a pen and pencil set. You know that he loved pen and pencils. For my son, Nathan, one of uh, Grampy Cassett's uh, wristwatch. For Joshua, a, a box of old keys full of skeleton keys. And for Nicholas, a set of Dickens works. For myself, <clears throat> I chose a Nacoma Pueblo pot. I've always loved pottery and glassware, but raising three boys precluded the purchase of pottery due to the possibility of damage. <clears throat> so I chose Papago basketry instead, living in Arizona as I was. Still, at that time, the boys were in their teens. Certainly, a small, small Acoma pot was possible to take home. And how long do you think that Acoma pot lasted in my house. One week. It was the first week, and it was shattered. So I have shards of this Acoma pot, and I love this. these shards. I have them. I take them around to different parts of my house. But yes, uh, it broke very, very quickly. This pot, probably from 1920. Jeremiah was called to be a prophet like so many other prophets, by divine touch. Let's listen to his call by God. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were a prophet, before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand, touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, but to plant and to build. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jeremiah, told by God to express God's thoughts and knowledge in that time and place. In our scripture reading for today, the place is the potter's home. That is the place where our creator would speak to Jeremiah. The potter had messed up, but significantly, this artist was already in the process of reworking the clay into another vessel. A simile for us to study. A nation has been acting sloppily and is askew. It needs another try to turn the nation into one that functions well, holds water, and becomes a people of grace and care. We hear, just as we did in the call to Jeremiah, of the ability of God to pluck up and destroy and then rebuild and plant. Even God's mind can change. We have the ability to change God's mind. What a concept. And this time of discernment for God happens time and again in the Bible. As in Psalm 14, God has a sense of sight and therefore moral discernment. God has the educative powers. God can therefore make a judgment about a problem. 
God especially sensitive to those who are suffering and are persecuted, to those who have lost their homes in her Hurricane Dorian, to those who have lost their life in fire and in water, to those families who will not be whole in the same way as before these events occurred. God will not tolerate the rich not caring for those that they could help. Defiance is shown. The people need to be remade, and this psalm clearly shows how. In the parables of Jesus, we hear how God cares for each and every person. There are many parables in a row that are used to confound and perhaps condemn the Pharisees and scribes. Let's listen to that. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what about that woman having 10 silver coins? If she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Words of wisdom, words of grace. Thanks be to God. The Pharisees and scribes grumbling because the adulterers, swindlers, immoral ones, and tax collectors were at the feet of Jesus to hear from him. They wanted to discourage others, the so-called righteous, from listening to this man. So Jesus works to help them understand by using the lost sheep. There are many others in that flock who are just fine in grazing, but where is that one that is missing? Where is it? The shepherd of the herd, a modest herd for that time, only a hundred sheep, will leave the 99 to find the one. Once found, all will rejoice with the complete 100 in the fold. Then the parable of the woman who has lost one little coin. She doesn't give up. She must find it. So she sweeps the dirt floor so that the coin might make a little musical sound and scrunches all around her house. She lights an oil lamp, as there is very little light in the house because there are no windows. And she is slow and careful until she finds this particularly tiny piece of wealth. Again, there's rejoicing. This is the only gospel that has this particular parable about the lost coin. Then the parables along come along about the prodigal son and show God's love in a simple, touching way. God is good, is grace, and has everlasting mercy. God cares for seemingly insignificant portions of life. There is nothing insignificant to God. Everything matters. Each one of us can be recreated. Each one of us can be forgiven. Each one of us can be made new thanks to the act of love God has for us as shown in Jesus the Christ. Jeremiah was sent to the right place, to the potter's shed, to hear the words of God. God sends us to the right locations. It might be a tiny company mining town on the outskirts of Death Valley. We have the knowledge that our pastor nominating committee will be reading just the right dossiers for a person who knows that Encino is the right spot for him or her to hear and proclaim the word of God. Great Uncle Walter lived in Canton, Ohio. <clears throat> he was a farmer. He knew about the cycles of life. He would tell us about the right way to plant potatoes. 
one must plant them on Easter Sunday morning. Once you plant them, you stop and you pray. Then you wait and you wait as the potato's eyes grow forth into lovely long green stems and with leaves. There will be certainty that when those long luxurious tendrils turn brown and die, the potatoes will be ripe for the harvest. We are praying now. We are waiting but active in the midst of this process. We come together for picnics near adobe buildings. We help children pick out back to school clothing for their first day of school in a newly created elementary school with high school attached. We gather on the first Friday nights with others from our community to build a pinata just waiting to be broken on our 75th anniversary on May 3rd, 2020. We welcome new members as we say goodbye to those who have moved. We celebrate when medical conditions improve and bones mend and ligaments heal. As God circulates in our midst, love is visible. Think of times when you did not necessarily feel love, but saw it in others. When you saw moms, dads, grandparents, caregivers in the midst of new life. When a child runs right up to you, looks up at you, and smiles. When two people have chosen to live their life together and work day and night as the years go by. Members from five churches gathered last weekend to labor in Trona and Ridgecrest, California. They were at the epicenter of the July 4th and July 5th earthquakes that we felt here. Cracks were everywhere. It was hard for their townspeople to even get the needed water into specific sites due to the cracked streets, sidewalks, and pathways. The pallets of needed items offered in a myriad of ways had to be carried into the sanctuary of Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Imagine a semi full of pallets to unload with no smooth surfaces to help in the transport movement. Imagine a sanctuary just like this, one half side filled with supplies and still filled months later for the community to come and receive. Most of the cracks in that area are cosmetic, our engineers discovered with joys. Still, they are problematic to the arms and legs of those who responded to the needs. Our group assessed damage. We are grateful for the engineers and an architect who attended last Saturday's morning of evaluation. Others helped children find back to school clothing, assisted with parents and their needs in the midst of the devastated world. When we went up to ask what size clothing they were looking for, this is an example of what we heard. My husband has cancer. I was fired last week. We had to move out of our home, and we are now living with friends with our three children, Ivan, Tabitha, and Clarissa. The tears began from that contorted face. The next day, following worship and a lunch provided by Ridgecrest Presbyterian Church, the town needed to be fed. We went over to get ready for each family and friends and fixed simple chili dogs. Kennedy had helped Tabitha to pick out a new outfit the day before from the offered uh, used clothing. Tabitha proudly wore it with jewelry to that community dinner. It was a dress-up occasion for her, eating a chili dog in the shade, in the dust, and the dirt. Tabitha had an urgent need to convey. Even though she had a speech impediment, and the topic was completely unclear about what she needed, she was able with some trying to state the need. There was a nearby ranch. On that ranch, there is a horse. That horse has ribs that show, and that means that the horse is hungry and not well cared for. Her desire was to feed the horse carrots, apples, and hay. She needed to care and love that horse. Pastor Dennis was brought into that discussion. Tabitha stated that she did not need to own the horse. She did not need to move the horse to her home. It did not need to be with her. All she needed was to be able to go to it, to feed it, and take care of it. 
As we were leaving, Pastor Dennis said, well, that's an easy request to handle. I'll just find out who owns that horse and she will be able to feed it. Easy, something we can handle for both parties. In the midst of the dust and the dirt of that mining skeletal town with dilapidated buildings, no doors or windows evident, love was observed. Each stated how much they loved their community. It was 110 degrees and they stated, well, this is cooler than expected for September 1st. And look over there, do you see that mountain? It's 12,000 feet in elevation. It's the mountain that's in Death Valley. You have got to go and see beautiful Death Valley. Do you see the beauty all around? The desert is beautiful. The stars are beautiful. The sunsets are beautiful. Love for a place that most of us it would appear to be unlovable. The sunsets, they said, they're magnificent. The average home in Trona costs $5,000. Our group did not think that they would even spend $1,000 on a house as the life there appears so desperate and unhealthy. Yet the residents of Trona love, just love their town. It is possible to see love. Our God, who is portrayed as having sight, makes judgments on us. I know that the leaders who care for the poor in Trona, those who move there because they cannot afford the rent in Los Angeles, and are willing to work in the mining factory, are judged by God with pleasure. We heard in Psalm 14 that God is in the company of the righteous. The Lord is the refuge of the poor. The rich confound the work of God. God seeks wisdom. Who is wise, says the poet, the writer of this song. Trona was a lost coin to us, lost until the earthquake. God can make us see what she sees in strange and terrible ways. Trona shows us what love looks like. We can see love with our eyes run in front of us. Love shining from their faces as they work and work to make life better in that dusty, dirty, hot area near a dry lake bed full of borax, salt, and baking soda. Let us know that each person, each coin, each plant, each fawn, each puppy is valuable to God who seeks us all. May we be part of the wise, part of those who do not eat people as easily as we eat a baguette part of God's people, remain into the image of Christ. When this happens, Jacob will rejoice and Israel will be glad for the fortunes of the people will be restored. This is doable and we are here to do it. Thanks be to God.